So today I'm going to be showing you something that you no doubt already know what it is by the video title, but um, this is going to be really cool because I've never seen something like this before, and this is the perfect thing for Windows 8. Unfortunately, I don't have a Windows 8 machine to test it on, so I have to use a Windows 7 machine, but this is the best thing for Windows 8. I haven't used it. Hopefully it works. did take some digging to find what I believe is a working copy. But we are going to see, check it out, install it, and uh, let's see what happens. So, um, this thing is called um, Command Shell for Windows. As you can plainly tell from the name, it runs on all versions of Windows. And the fact that my camera LCD is showing everything backwards is kind of um, throwing me off here. But... I know that everything isn't backwards because if I flip it like this, everything is not backwards. It just happens to be that my camera flips it backwards for some reason. Anyway, back to the subject. It's made by a company called uh, GCT. Not sure what that acronym stands for, but apparently their website's down or it doesn't exist because I can't actually access it. So we're going to have to log in. Uh, hopefully you can't see me logging in. Yes, you can. So I'm going to just flip up the lens cap so you can't see this. Alright, focus camera. Thank you. So let's take a look at it. It will arrive in your system as a zip file. So there isn't really... You have to have some way of unzipping it. It will not run on Linux. It's a Windows thing, although I'm pretty sure they're working on a, uh, a version for Linux as well, which would be really cool when that's finished, but it would be really difficult. So you can see in the current state, we have just, don't get out of here, we have just Windows in general, it looks like ordinary Windows, there's nothing special about it, but we're going to install the command shell. And there's a reason why it's called Command Shell, but it's pretty interesting. I've already unzipped it, so I have all the files here. And we're going to take a look at those. As you can see, whoops. Those are all the files that are here. Let's run the installation. Actually, let's take a look at the install notes first. It says, which you can't read, all you have is a white screen. You really can't read this, and this camera does not want to focus today. Okay, I'll just read it out for you. Command Shell for Windows Install Notes. Hopefully by this point all files are extracted to a folder. If not, do that now. After that, run the install file as an administrator, which is important apparently because it's in all caps. Running as an ordinary user will fail, if on Vista or later possibly on XP and may create a huge mess. That's it. How easy is that? Wow, actually, that is a really easy installation. Uninstallation is the same way, blah, 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 blah. So let's install the damn thing, because that's what you're watching this video for, right? All right, let's run the installer as an administrator, like it says to do. There are a lot of files in this folder. I don't know why it needs so many files. Yes, I want to run that. And it pops up this wonderful little command window, because obviously it's a batch file, so... Let's see what it says. Command shell for Windows batch mode installer. This is the first part of the install. Apparently it's a two-part installation, even though there's one install file. It will copy the files to a directory. You will be asked to create the directory, which it has asked us for now. Is this a file or a directory? Well, you we could really screw it up by selecting file, but I don't want to do that because I want this to get done in one take, so I'm going to say directory. Complete. System will shut down now. So apparently the system is supposed to shut down, even though it isn't. Hmm. This is interesting. Pretty sure it's supposed to shut down. Do I have to, like, type something? No. Yeah, I think there's a problem here in their coding. It's pretty pathetic when you can't code your own batch files correctly. 
But I suppose I'll let it pass because I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a good program considering it's a um, command shell, which uh, we all know that the command line is the best thing ever invented, especially considering Windows 8 is now going towards um, making users memorize millions of keyboard commands, so we're just going to close this and reboot the system manually. We'll see if it works. Hopefully it works, because I really only want to get this done in one take. Of course, on camera it probably won't work, but whatever. I haven't actually tested this before, so I don't know if it's going to work or not. Yeah, I'm actually looking at the camera, which is why my face looks really weird. Yes. I actually think I'm going to take the camera off the tripod for this part because this is really, excuse me, cool. So you have to see it up per in person. Hi there, everybody. Uh, my hair is a mess today. This is not cool. I don't like it like this. Obviously, we have to log in again. And let's hope that it actually works. Because if not, then I'm going to have to give this a negative review, and I don't really want to do that. It's already not on a good side because the batch file didn't work. Let's see what happens. Have a command window open. Holy crap. Check that out. Now that, that's fancy. Get that out of the way. So as you can see, it doesn't take over the entirety of Windows. Windows is still there. And you can still do things manually like that. But here it is, the command shell for Windows. Cool. About command shell for Windows. Version 1.0. Oh. Works best with Windows Vista or Windows 7. Not test it on Windows 8. Hmm. <laughs> be great for Windows 8. They should have tested it on Windows 8, but apparently they didn't. It's, apparently, it's also very apparently very modern because it's copyright 2013 GCT Enterprises. All rights reserved. Press any key to continue, so let's do that. Uh, here we go. So what should we do? Let's run a program. Oh wow, it has all these built into it already. What are, what is, what do they call this? This is, um, Ah, uh, geez. The built-in system stuff. So you have a calculator, you have a character map, you have the command prompt, which is already open, but whatever. Control panel, disk defragmenter, didn't think you'd see that there, did you? An explorer window, MS Paint, notepad, the registry editor, which I, I don't think is a really good idea to have there, but whatever. It's there anyways. Sound recorder, sticky notes, task manager, and WordPad. Let's start task manager. Oh wow, it actually works and starts task manager. Cool. Nice. Okay, you get out of my face. Press any key to continue. How do you get out of this? I suppose there's some non-obvious way, because it is DOS after all. Calculator. Calculator works. Uh, how about the disk defragmenter? Ooh. Fancy. I've never actually seen this before because I've never used it. MS Paint. Explorer window? Even opens up an Explorer window. Uh, how about Sticky Notes? Sticky Notes work? Sticky Notes works. Fancy, yes. Um, Alright, so I believe actually Escape gets out of that. Yes, it does. So let's say you want to add a program. How do you do that? Hmm. It's really a handy dandy add program to list function, so let's use that. Is the program installed yet? Yes, it is. Type exit at any time to cancel. So let's enter the name of the folder. Hmm, what is the name of the folder? 
Leave it C program files Mozilla Firefox. By the way, in case you didn't realize, we are adding Firefox here. See if that works. Firefox.exe. I've done this many times before, so this is how I know this. Let's just call it Firefox. Be easy. And unfortunately, it doesn't actually appear in all caps, but whatever. See if it can load Firefox. Holy crap, it actually works. So this is actually really awesome. I love this. How about removal of a program from the list? Let's remove Firefox. Nah, I don't really want to completely uninstall it. And it actually works. So let's say, yes, it's installed already. Ah, uh, fail. That's a bug. Okay, so it doesn't let you do that. Fail, .exe was not found. Okay, cool. That's awesome. So when it glitches up like that, it actually doesn't break the program. I still don't know why it did that, but whatever. C program files Mozilla Firefox. I want to test something. I want to see if it actually um, runs the uninstaller. Should you want it to be in all caps, you can do that. But you have to do it manually. And you better spell it right, because it'll be like that forever. Remove Firefox from the list. Let's say I want to... I hit yes here. What does it do? Ha <laughs> ha! Failure! Obviously, it doesn't work. So I guess what it's trying to do is actually open up the add remove programs thing, but it can't do it because it has to um, open up the CPL. It's trying to open up the CPL file by itself, and obviously it doesn't work. Anyway, let's say we want to exit Windows. Yes, I want to exit Windows. It locks up. So that's a failure. Uh, that's really unfortunate. Um, okay. Anyway, I believe that pretty much covers everything that you need to know about the command shell for Windows. Uh, really nice program. Too bad it isn't really coded correctly and doesn't work. Or at least half of it doesn't work, which is really unfortunate. But anyway, um... Hope you enjoyed, and uh, just one more thing before I go. Before you take any of this too seriously, you had better check the date on your computer. I am definitely messing with you. <laughs> Happy April Fool's Day, everybody. This is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then.